Quakers, strap in, because we have something very special coming up next. We're getting into a lovely series. This one's been looking luscious on the schedule all day. And of course, it's Tox taking on Kilson. It's going to be big. It's going to be a banger. We had a special guest in store, of course. You know, it, we've already mentioned it. We've got to get him in it. We need him to join me and Harry and bring the true pizzazz that this series requires as DJ Wheat's coming in for the last two games of the night. Yo, hey, what's up? I, you know, Jackie, I tuned in this morning and I saw your jacket and I almost was like, oh, I've got a neon jacket in the closet. <laughs> I kind of feel like I should bust it out, but uh, I didn't. Maybe I'll have to go get it for the final series. I don't know. But gentlemen, it's great to be here. Uh, already been some great games today, uh, but these two series coming up, I am uh, excited for, even though we've got the top of the pack on the US side and kind of the the bottom of the pack on the EU side, which feels really strange to say because we've still got two amazing players who are duking it out. And this match is so important because we are just uh, a week left in regulation play and then we'll go on to the finals. So, you know, two players that you would not expect to be where they are at in the rankings are now going head to head to decide if one will move up and might solidify the other spot at the very bottom, forcing them to fight challengers match early on. So either way you look at it, these are going to be two amazing series today. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think I was going to say like, even with Tox, I think he's pretty much relegated, not hundred percent, but the main talking point for him is the fact that even if he is, he needs to put off a very strong performance in this match to show the other people in the Challenger League finals who qualified so the Tox is still very strong. He is very strong. Okay, yes, you're phone up. He's lost every series, but he's taken a lot of maps off. A lot of the series have been very, very close. And you can't look a blind mm -hmm. eye on this guy. Like, you know, when he's on form, he can be untouchable. He hasn't really been on form much for the entire course of the stage. No. But if he wins this series, at least it shows for the players waiting in the Challenger League finals. Then we'll have to see what he can do against it. But Tox wants to prove a point where if he can take out someone like Kielsen, then they may be a little bit worried playing against Tox in a few weeks' time. It's a bit of a battery change for him, right? It's one of those where towards the end of this season, at least he's shown that he's still got a lot of energy left. We know Tox can be really sick. When he turns up, it's so phenomenal to watch. But there's a lot of those attributes that you can apply to Kilson as well. At times, mm -hmm. he's a little bit volatile. You never know if you're going to get Railson, if you're going to get Tiltson. There's a lot of different faces on this man. I love all of them equally, but I'm worried about which one of them is going to turn up tonight. Yeah, I mean... Uh... Gosh, I've, I've thought about this, you know, kind of all morning, just thinking about and and everything you said about toxic is true. But the fact of the matter is, it's like we just haven't seen that toxic in, in a while. No. And Kilson is someone who throughout the whole season, not only last season, but then now in season two, may not have had some of the greatest performances, but has been thirsty. And in some cases, has just absolutely dazzled and amazed us. So I do still have to kind of lean a little bit more uh, in Kilson's favor this matchup. With that with that said, I mean, positioning is crucial in this these final two weeks, right? And to figure out if you are going to have to play versus the challengers up and coming throughout both of the regions, or if you're just going to kind of get seeded, uh, you know, in, in, into the into the final. So, I, I, you know, I feel like that means Kilson's got to turn it on tonight. But equally, if Toxic wants to have any life left in in this league he's got to pick up a victory today now with zero and eight though you know that would be essentially his first win series win of the season and that's a tall order against a player like kilson it, it really is. is yeah with kilson as well we know what kind of a player he can be but you remember that on the eu region just in general on the leaderboard every single one of them i think it's like five or six players about 50 points you know, away a gap from each other. So mm -hmm. every map win counts. There. It's not even just a series. Even if Kilson does lose and it goes to map number three, he needs to take at least one map. But Kilson's yeah. looking for this series win. And if he does, then that's phenomenal. That's great stuff. That will put him up a little bit higher. And the other EU players will also be a little bit worried. You know, there's at least <laughs> another four or five players who could actually drop in the relegation. Kool is there at the moment. But then again, you know, I have to see what he can do here. Because for Tox, you know, you could say that it's not really too much you know, point for him now because he's pretty much been relegated. But it's kind of like a statement to say if he takes down Kilson, then the two players who've qualified from the Challenger Finals, I think it's Garpy and Sirius, you know, they'll be looking to knock heads and try and at least take him out of the uh, Quake Pro League. 
well, let's knock our heads together and get into the veto and see what we think about yeah. the picks and bans we've been given for this one. Because there's a lot riding on it. Obviously, any edge that Tox can find when it comes to the maps and champions will be a gigantic boon. Anything that sticks out to you immediately, Wait? Um, well, I'm I'm also writing down. Let's see. Uh, I mean, I'm not ex I'm not surprised to see uh, both Koth and Deep Embrace out of it. I think both of these players absolutely want to play on maps that they are uh, comfortable with. You know, I'm not the biggest keel on Awoken, uh, you know, uh, fan, but uh, I understand why players play it that way. Uh, so, mm -hmm. you know. Um, no, maybe maybe just a pick here in in Moltens. I I think that will be pretty interesting. Uh, you know, given these two uh, style of play, but I I still everything I'm seeing here, I'm I'm still leaning a bit towards Kilson. Yeah, with Kilson, I'm a little bit surprised he's banned Deep Embrace. He's had a good reputation on that map, but it can slide either way depending on your opponent yeah. you play against. He clearly isn't comfortable enough. But Tox, I think in terms of the map choices, it's in Tox's favour. He's very good on Awoken. Both players love Blood Covenant anyway, but for Kilson to choose Molten Falls, I want to know why he's actually selected that. He doesn't play it that often. Um, I wouldn't really say he's amazing at it, but he is pretty good from some previous match that we've seen weeks and weeks ago. Blood Covenant with the Athena banned, choosing the choice of Visor. Understandable, we've seen a lot of Visor play when Athena gets banned. But decides to go for the BJ for Tox. So I want to see what he's up to with that champion too on Blood Covenant. Yeah, it, it does feel a little bit like we've been given like a car boot sale veto for this one. <laughs> it, it's very much out of the ordinary, honestly. And, like, you look at it, right? And you're looking at some of the map picks. And then you look at the, the champions that are thrown in there. Yeah. Keel to start. It's like, all right, it's a bit of an eyebrow raiser. Maybe you can make it work. I don't know. It, it just feels really, really far from, from the norm for both of these guys. So potentially it's going to be a spicy one no matter what we. I, I, I mean, it, it really looks like Kilson as a lineup that says, I'm going to get the first frags that I need, and then I've got everything in my toolkit to be able to hold on to a lead, which mm. is not surprising considering some of the matchups that Kilson has had where that lead has kind of slipped out of his hands a, a few times over some really great players, but those are some of the most frustrating losses. So uh, I almost feel like it is completely defensive from Kilson in terms of everything that he's got on the board. As far as Toxic, you know, I'm guessing this is just what he feels the most comfortable with because he needs a series win. Yeah, he certainly does indeed. Molten Falls, you can see Slash has been banned. I think Kilson's a little bit worried about the mobility and speed of the strategies that Tox could possibly use. So he wants to play it as safe as possible. But even at the very end, we don't really see a BJ on Blood Covenant that often. It's quite rare in certain scenarios. Tox decided to ban the Athena, doesn't want the verticality to play against, which can be a bit of a pain in the backside. It's weird though. It's like, well, some of the champion picks make sense. Some of them, it's like they just took the champions out of a hat. It's balmy. Oh, yeah, mate. They've, they've had a bit of a raffle, and this is what they've come up with. I, like, <laughs> I mean, the darts. bands make a lot of sense, at least, right? Like, in terms of that, you can see the reads of that. I do like Tox getting rid of Nyx early on. If you can avoid Kilson being on Nyx in a series, then that's immediately a tick in the right direction. Because, I don't know, Kilson and Nyx just goes together just like yin and yang. It's such a good duo when he can pull her off and just, just go for those crazy plays. He's so efficient with the ghost walk. So the fact that's not in for this series could be a big boon. All in all, though, I, I think this just comes down to if Tox comes out and just gives it. I, I want to see him playing his best, looking like young Tox, just playing ridiculously the entire time. So what do you guys think about predictions? It's hard to say. I'm probably going to say Kilson should take this 2-1 or 3-0. We haven't really seen an on-form Tox or a high-level consistency throughout the entire stage. And what reason would you have that now? You know, it's just Kilson is still the possibility of being at relegation, even though he's in seventh place, I believe, right now. But still, the points mm -hmm. still collide with the others. They're still so tight in comparison. We can't really tell exactly what's going to happen. It is going to go to the final week or maybe even today, depending on the circumstances. So it's a must win for Kilson. But Tox will only want to win this series to prove to the people in the Challenger League the fact that he's still got it and if he takes down Kilson, i think the people in challenges will be a little bit worried so both of them have different reasons as to why they want to try and win this series wow i look at it right and i think my mind's telling me Kilson, but my heart's telling me tox and i've got Same. to go with my heart you've got to follow it you've got to stick to it i, I think there's a 2-1 in here for tox all right well my heart is ice cold today i'm gonna go with <laughs> what my brain says i should go with and that's gonna be a 3-0 3-0 kilson i'd love to see some great games here um but if i'm looking at everything on paper 
it's it's got to be a, a Kilson win 3-0. I think he knows how important this matchup is, and I'm guessing he's going to be playing knowing that uh, he does not want to be firing things off in the finals with a challenger match. That's the no, thing, yeah. though. Tox has the map choices in his favor, really. So it's I'm not saying it's his to lose, but it's just a champion pick. So it's just a tad iffy. So we'll have to say. Yeah, that is very true. <laughs> Unfortunately, though, of course, we do have to get rid of the iffy man on the desk. We, we've been getting shady <laughs> looks about you being around, <laughs> Harry. Unfortunately, we got to let you go. It's just time to, uh, to put you to one side. We'll bring you back later if you calm down a bit. All right, nice. mate? I'll try and calm down nice a little season. bit during the series. Don't worry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to be hard, though, We This is looking to actually be a pretty sick series, man. If this is just a classic game of Quake, right, and we get Tox and Kills and just going at it in a scrap, this could be dope. And, and honestly, that's what I kind of always hope for right i mean i'll throw out my predictions chats throwing out their predictions at the end of the day it doesn't matter as long as we get some really entertaining games both of these players uh capable of of putting on a great a great show for us here and you know a couple of folks in chat was like don't lie we i know you want to I'm like yeah like there's a <laughs> there's a a little bit of like uh, you know you mentioned heart and like yeah. he's a legend right it's just uh uh, every once in a while, I get these things that pop up on your feed. It's like, yeah, like 15 years ago. And uh, the other day, like a, a picture with Toxic at a tournament popped up like 15 years ago. And I'm like, eh, eh, you know, it's hard not to to want to see someone who's been playing that long find success. But, you know, Kilson, especially based off his performance last year, he's, he's looking to stay. And I think he's looking to solidify uh, his spot here. So critically important matchup either way. Just hope it's a, a display of awesome fireworks. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I, I think it's also, even when you look at it, right, like Tox, more so these days, he is kind of the quiet type. You know, you won't really hear a peep from him, but he will translate how he feels in game. Whereas <laughs> yes, Kilson, very true. He, he'll come out, man. He'll be vocal. He'll tell you how he's feeling. And recently, he's been backing it up. He's had some tall words, yeah. but he's been living up to the hype, boy. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I think that com really comes back to the, you know, what we know he is, is capable of. So... Uh, what toxic are we gonna get today? Well, we're gonna we're gonna find out here in, in just a moment as we're immediately gonna have uh, our first fight here uh, going up the jump pad. We do have the grenades coming out and a nice rail from the top dropping down uh, by toxic on top of Kilton. It's not gonna result in a frag, but all right, those grenades are doing work and uh, yeah, here we go. First thirty seconds, but we're already seeing some nice action here. Man, the crazy bit is, right, Tox, that, that second follow-up rail, if that would have hit, it would have done so much damage, Kilson. He'd be in a really horrendous spot, but it looks like that's the way it's going to go anyway. Tox, just the commanding effort there, drops down with the LG, fully holds, and ruins him. The rails are on point tonight as well, We, If this is a sign of things to come, oh, this could be beautiful Tox on display. I completely agree. And you know, we know from uh, from old, Toxic was once renowned for having one of the greatest LGs in the game. And that first frag showed exactly why people uh, were envious of, of his game and his skill with that weapon. He got the first frag with that one. Hit a, hit a very nice rail off the top of it. Like this fight coming out here at Heavy. The pineapples coming out. Still getting a rocket in from Kilson and a rail. Unfortunately, I'm not sure Toxic should have gone in after eating that rocket, but Kilson capitalizes and we're tied up one to one. Dream scenario when I'm up like awoken. This might be a bit of a nightmare for Tox though. Stuck. As he tries to peek out from behind the pillar, Kilson actually missing that rail. Basically nutmegged in with a rail gun. But it won't matter, as he's bouncing up and down with the LG. Does so much damage that Tox has to hightail it out of there. He's got to get back over towards the heavy, but he's there four seconds early. No chance to build himself back up. Kilson commits with the LG and finds himself a frag up early on. Yeah, and then, uh, I mean, that was very nice committal with the LG. Of course, I'm sitting here complimenting Toxic's LG, and then Kilson comes right back out and says, hey, I can... I can use that weapon too. <laughs> uh, and and so far we are getting the match uh, that I think that we wanted, Jackie. Like I, you know, this is, it's been a, it's been a nice little display so far, uh, but uh, still following Kilton here anyway, as he is gonna grab the heavy and reposition Tribolt coming out. He has a good idea of where, uh, where Toxic is, especially with those grenades coming out from the side and actually doing a fair bit of damage here as the Mega does pop off and not quite the amount of the Mega, but pretty close. Uh, and so Kilson, uh, you know, oh, oh my, 
the needle, threads the needle, and uh, as I thought he was going to be able to get away and and uh, you know restack there, he gets uh, he gets tagged pretty hard, tying this game back up. Oh, that is gnarly from Tox, and I think you're absolutely right in the sense that it feels like this game at the minute is just a tech demo between these two players of showing off their prowess in Quake, how efficient they are with every gun in their arsenal. Some crazy flicks coming out. Tox at this point feels like he is on death's door though. Quite close to falling over. He really doesn't have much stack left. But Kilson, he's given him a bit of breathing room. He has backed off and he's opted to play it smart rather than full sending it and committing. And maybe it's a bad outcome. As he backs off, we see the rail through the murder hole. Both of them, very similar stacks at this point. Mega's up in two seconds. The Kilson has to initiate round the corner, soaking up all the damage, but he'll get the kill, We, Yeah, and, uh, you know, I actually thought that he was going to get that kill earlier on. You know, he left Toxic so low after those two rails. Uh, but, you know, uh, decided that wasn't the time to go after it. Still manages to capitalize and pick up that frag to give himself the lead. Now kind of controlling that middle area, going to fire through the murder hole and sees that that heavy is up. A nice little bait there coming out for Toxic as he jumps and uh, the rockets come out from Kilson. Toxin realizes, uh, Toxic realizes that there is a trap there, um, but does not fall for it. Kilson's rail has been real uh, nice so far though. 23 shots sitting at a 43%, uh, just a little bit higher than uh, Toxic's, but it seems like it's kind of turning on for him at this point. So strange encounter with the LG though, and he does not miss a trick. Every single zap hitting and just burning through the armor of Tox, leaving him lifeless once again. And Kilson, now is a good lead. That rail was thick though, wielding it like a shotgun, trying to dip in for a second as he's just stabbing. So much damage going out, but Tox doesn't give a damn. He might have taken some heavy hits, but his confidence is still booming. He swings back, keeping Kilston in a rough spot. And they're just swinging on one another. The amount of flicks are coming out. My God. It's like, you know, no defense, really. Just like, just throwing punches back and forth uh, at, at this point. And, you know, we saw that even with those two rails coming out from Kilston. And then he, he kind of like switched to the RL and then to the lightning gun and then started doing some damage again. But uh, either way, he's got the lead. So it is working for him right now. Um, you know, Toxic, I guess the question is, is like he's down by two. We've passed the halfway point. You know, what does he need to do, right? Well, Kilson's certainly making his job a lot harder because he's hitting some crucial, crucial rails. Um, but I, I just, you know, we haven't seen Toxic really been able to uh, grab the control, I think, that, that he wants here on Awoken. Does land a rail up the side. There we see a grenade coming out. A second one almost hits, and they exchange rails again, and Toxic is left so low again, and he's just not getting the better of these exchanges. The crazy bit is, right, it feels like in terms of the actual damage in the fight, they're pretty evenly matched. It's just the Kilson, he's had free reign over all of the major items. So his stack's just so much bigger, exponentially so, that every time they go head to head, even though Tox is matching the damage, Kilson's just able to absorb so much more and keep on fighting. And we're seeing that haunt him even more, right? Now three frags up. There's about four minutes left. There is a ton of time for Tox to get in the game, but he's got to do something drastic, we. Yeah, I mean, we, we haven't seen, right, what Tox can do when he has control in this particular game. Uh, the back and forth, which happened early on in those first couple of minutes, it, it, you know, it was kind of just the, you know, that battling, that the punching mm. in the middle of the ring, like we said. But no one really had true c control, and that changed when Gilson got his third frag. So he's been holding on to that, and, uh, you know, I don't... I, you know, Toxic, I feel like, has been trying to position himself, but we've seen Kilson with at least two different traps where he has either, you know, just waited, been very silent, looking for an opportunity, uh, and then again, he's hitting these rails as we got another two coming out there. A great double set of grenades followed up with the rail, but oh my god, the defensive rail from Kilson coming out, and you know that Toxic smells blood. You know, oh my god, and another one. It's like four in a row, and Toxic has to be screaming in frustration like what do i do against this oh mate kilson's been blowing off his toes one by ones making it really hard for tox to ever wear sandals again at this point look how low he is as he's got a retreat around oh after about punch. no he gives him a free haircut and absolutely ruins him to get himself on six kills how does he do this 
90 after 90 as he hits another crazy rail. Oh, somebody stop Railson. Uh, and now he just feels like he has completely downloaded Toxic. Like he knows, okay, Toxic is gonna come after me. He he really wants his frag. He's kind of turned on that that uh, aggressive switch. Uh, that's how he was able to land those beautiful defensive rails, just literally setting himself up for another frag to pad his lead. Um, and you know, Toxic, he, it's all on him. Four frags, two minutes, tough to do. Needs to be hitting these rails, uh, but really has been needing to hit them all game long, setting himself up to see if he can get any sort of advantage here. It does hit another nice rail, but Kilson's right back with one, uh, you know, uh, you know, in exchange. So four frags, 90 seconds. I think Kilson just figured Toxic out and was able to play the game he needed to in this last five minutes to really close the book. Uh, I, I don't, I don't see Toxic bringing this one back. I mean, I know normally we could kill some Cheetah, right? But at this point, it looks more like a boa constrictor because he's just stopped Tox from getting any breathing room into this game. And Tox was playing some quality Quake at the start as well. He's starting to show us a little bit more of that. Coming around the corner, ready for action with the rail. Hits one, good transition to the LG, chasing him down. Pineapple's going flying. It's like a fruit salad, but it's very aggressive. Whips out the rail once again, but can't quite catch up to Kilson. He'll get away, making full use of the double jump on the Doom. To just make it so much harder for Tox to chase him. He's giving it uh, everything that he's got, but at this point, you know, I talked a little bit about Kilson going with the defensive picks, things that he, you know, he felt like I can get the lead and then I can just kind of play game. And that's exactly what I feel like I'm seeing right now. Both players incredibly low, not great for Toxic as he is desperately in need of these frags in the final moments of this game. He's gonna pick up a couple 25s, but Kilson's like, I don't even have to fight anymore. I can hang out in these back hallways. There's a defensive rocket uh, just for good measure. And with 11 points of health remaining and 10 seconds left to go. Toxic just cannot find a final frag. He's looking for it and Kilson will find it instead, making it eight to four as the buzzer sounds. Man, that was a 53% rail accuracy at the end as well for Kilson with like 2.2K damage. <laughs> it was just that sudden spree. Well, it must've been like five or six rails in a row, right? Just one after another whilst he's backtracking. Yeah, I mean, a couple of things, and we'll we'll see him here. We'll see a couple of these in the uh, uh, as the tape rolls. But, you know, Kilson, obviously, rail was on. But mm. even more important than that, you know, there were at least two solid traps set up by Kilson where he had the stack. He could kind of, like, you know, blow off his own rotation mm. and just sort of strategically wait at one point in the map, wait for Toxic to come around the corner, gets, you know, 70, 80 un, uh, unanswered LG damage uh, points off, and then is able to pick up the frag, kind of, you know, bringing it back. And we saw that look of frustration there at the beginning on, on Kilson's face, but he, he held his composure, brought it back very nicely, and uh, I got to give him credit. I think he, he played the way that I really think he needed to, to to start with a commanding lead and then also for, you know, some motivation and some momentum going into game two. Oh, yeah. It's also the fact as well that even aside from the Quake, I, I think Kilson's genuinely the best player to watch in terms of facial reactions. Some of the stuff <laughs> he provides is just absolutely magnificent. Oh, man. Uh, I'd love it. If we could just look at the full screen Kilson cam for the entirety of the game week, it, it would yeah. be a dream come true. <laughs> Yeah, I uh, I have to I have to agree. You get a little bit of something every single time, and you know I I gotta I gotta give credit to chat because there's a couple of folks. Uh, Miley I M says I can't believe how good Toxic still is, and it and it's true. Like think yeah. about think about how successful Kilson was in this game last season. And, you know, Toxic may not have been putting up some of the, the results that we expect to see out of a player like this, but after so many years in Quake, you really do have to give him credit. Like, 8-4 to four is still uh, a pretty good score considering how that game started off and how he played. Kilson ultimately got the best, but yes, Toxic is still there. The guy is still a beast. Oh, he's unreal. Like, especially when he turns it on, he has games like that as well, where you get to see, like, the fact that he can still do it and he can still hang with the best in the business. It, it's crazy, man. It, it does make you wish. Like, if we could have just given him the fountain of youth and, and kept him young forever, <laughs> how much damage would he be doing?
Yeah, that's a scary thought, man. We can't we can't be thinking about that right now. It's, it's, it's crazy. You could say that about a few of the competitors here in the the QPL, but that's why it's been so exciting this season too. Uh, sort of these these like multiple generations of legends, the new, old, uh, just kind of clashing in unbelievable ways. Got another one coming up in the next featured matchup. Just really exciting stuff. This is why I know every one of these folks sign, uh, joins us here on on Sunday, and we are moving on to our next map and we are moving into molten and you know what do you think right not a, not a huge defeat in that previous game uh from from kilson over toxic but what do you think going into uh molten here i, I think kilson has an edge just off the back of the map i, I feel like molten plays to his strength an awful lot Ooh. but you never know especially if tox is coming back into it looking confident from what we've seen in the opening 10 seconds it seems like he is willing to have a bit of a scrap he pulled out the shotty did a nice bit of damage they've already split major items one apiece and tox is on the hunt where you can see he's out for blood yeah and i i mean you know i do think that uh if he is going to win this map, he needs to have it, you know, done with a pretty decisive victory, right? Like he's got to take that lead. And here we go for the heavy, maybe a little late fire in that LG. The cells don't go out and uh, we do see the heavy picked up a nice rail coming out and Kilson is pretty low. He's going to have to run a rate now. Uh, I like this. He's just going to sit on it a little bit. I'm sure that uh, Kilson is thinking that he probably scooped that up and is going around the back corner. Uh, but instead, Toxic is going to mix it up just a little bit here. And uh, that will give him enough time to make it over to the heavy and potentially have full control over all the items. And uh, is he going to bait it out a little bit? He's going to delay it just a little bit. But he does grab it. And uh, there it is. Uh, first set of control. Good way to start things off. Obviously, no opening frag on the board just yet, but it could be coming out quite soon as Tox really commits as he peers over the lip. Oh, Kilston, he grabs himself the Mega, he builds himself back up. The miss from the rails could come back to haunt him as it allows Kilston to get close, hits him directly in the head with the rockets and does pick up the opening kill. Yeah, uh, man, a, a lot, a lot kind of happened there. I, I'm going to be interested in, in watching that one again. Uh, but Kilson kind of missing the rockets. Uh, Toxic almost had it right with the with the mm. rails. Uh, unfortunately, backed into that corner. Not a great place to be. Much, much easier to hit. Kilson on the board with one, and he is going to grab the mega. But you can see Tox is he's thirsty. He he wants uh, he wants action. He wants to fight here on Molten, and I like it. I'm with it. Um, you know, can he get control? Because I don't think that really happened come out of his last, uh, you know, his, his last frag. And it does look like Heavy is going to go over to Toxic side. So Kilson's going to have to, you know, be uh, working a little bit here. Get some tribal damage. And a little bit more coming around that controller. LG is out and it just locks on with a beautiful rail to seal the deal on that frag two to zero. Oh my. Kilston looking young, scrappy and hungry and he's not throwing away his shots because all of the buckshot is connecting into the face of Pox at this point. The shotty doing so much damage. It was nearly a first frag picked up in a matter of seconds there. The downtime between kills would have been phenomenal. Oh, that's crazy though. Toxic barely clipping Kilston and he does more wheat. The follow-up rail's even better. He can get himself the major item. And Tox, off the back of that one second, he's back in the game here. He's only Absolutely. one frag down. Yeah, that was uh, that was great. And that's why you don't uh, count out a player like that. You you know, you, you, you've got to be playing all 10 minutes uh, with the utmost seriousness of a player like Toxic, for sure. Uh, him hitting these rails. And you can see it just in how he moves, where he knows where his opponent is. Like, it's all there in, in Toxic's, he Toxic's head. I just think, you know, sometimes uh, the aim's not necessarily connected with, with all that. He had a few unfortunate things, you know, obviously dropping down from the top, gotten hit with that LG early on. Uh, but this gives him an opportunity to kind of regain control. Like, great exit out of the top and a rail coming out from Kilson, Toxic trying to figure out how he's going to recover from that one. And, uh, you know, we're going to see both of these items come up at the exact same time. So is Toxic going to head over, try to grab the heavy and then maybe go for the mega? Or is he just going to back off here and grab that mega? Well, both are up. And uh, <laughs> we saw a lot of misses there, Jackie. But uh, one final rail coming out from Toxic.
Yeah, both of them just sweating bullets. But in the end, Tox is the first one to break a sweat and probably have a sigh of relief when he hits the rail and just goes, all right, that's enough. We can both leave. We'll forget about that. No one clip it. It didn't happen. Oh, boy, oh, boy. But this game's already been spicy, man. I, I didn't think we'd actually see this much aggression coming out on Molten. I thought it'd be a lot quieter. But both Tox and Kilson, they're willing to run a lot of risks at the minute. And Tox... He could be going head first into a risk if he's not careful. He needs to back off. Just play for the major item here. Get yourself the heavy and play it safe. Yeah, they did swap this time uh, as we have Toxic grabbing that heavy. And I think he's he's fine with that, especially with, you know, with Galena. And uh, there we got another rail battle happening as these two are just completely uh, content with strafing around doorways and firing back at one another. Uh, interestingly enough, either so good in terms of movement skills or just uh, at that moment not hitting the best rails uh, because, uh, well, a lot of those didn't hit, but it doesn't matter uh, because what matters is when those frags fire up on the, the screen, right? So five minutes left to go, one to two, still very very much uh possible here for toxic i think like the big worry would be just the uh a one additional frag that kilson could get right having a two frag lead because kilson's definitely in a position to be able to just run 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 uh, so toxic's gonna really need to focus down tie this game up and possibly get that one frag because i would not want to be uh versus kilson with that champ uh in the final moments of this game here on molten Obviously, the setup is huge for Tox as well, right? The fact he's been able to get these totems down so close together, just above the heavy, means that effectively he's got a free mega and heavy every time he wants to pick them up on the rotation. So he's got double the major items to play with over Kilson. So he can take a lot more risks. Although Kilson, will he be looking like an exterminator? Can he get in there and get rid of the totem infestation and stop Tox from having that additional benefit? He doesn't commit to it. Instead, backs off and play smart, grabbing the mega. Again, though, this means Tox, he gets both of them. He can push back up wheat and just heal himself all the way back up. He's got that huge stack advantage. Yeah, absolutely huge. But Kilson knows that, right? And he's uh, he's trying to set up his own traps. He will stop at moments and at great places where he could see or hear his opponent. Um, and that's exactly what he's doing right here. A perfectly placed defensive rocket. He will immediately jump over to the side. Toxic almost hitting that rail. That would have been so huge. He does hit that one because his opponent is dropping down to Mega. And it is little moments like that. Get rid of that armor stack that he has and perhaps he can open open up an uh, opportunity for himself. Uh, but I, I really do like this dance that we're seeing here. I think both players are playing how I would expect them to, with Toxic really going for that epic overstack, and then Kilsen kind of slowing it down a little bit and trying to set up those uh, traps. Seven minutes and 20 have passed. It is only the one frag lead at the minute for Kilson. They're keeping their distance, but finally they converge on top of one another. He hits him with the rocket, but there's no follow-up Tox. He's so low. He's got to get away. Kilson, he's not chasing. Doesn't go for the full frontal assault. Instead, backs off and plays smart about this. He should be able to spot him out here beneath the bounce pad. If he goes up, it's effectively Tox just writing his death note here and saying goodbye. A couple of pre-fires come out with the rockets. They're trying their best. We... He's actually given the Mega. He gets it and stays alive. Yeah, and I think he knew he could fall back to the Heavy right there. And a great rail, anticipating Toxic coming out through that opening. And uh, this is exactly what I was talking about a few minutes ago when I said I would not want to be... Uh, or st I would not want Kilson to have that, right? Even one frag lead going into the final moments uh, because this is what was to be expected. And again, going back to the sort of defensive picking of maps and, and champions here, Toxic hitting a nice rail. It's what he needs to do. He is desperate, desperate, de desperate to tie this up because at least going to sudden death uh, will force Kilson to come out and fight. And here we go. Two rockets, three rockets. He can't finish it up. He has to like do everything just to stay on top of the map but both players are incredibly low as we don't oh, we've got about 10 or so seconds to the next set of items he needs to capitalize here soon take it two to two you don't have much time left we're getting close towards the final 60 seconds and here's the rough part you look at the ammunition for tox right no rockets he's got to rely on the rest of his arsenal and he needs those rockets to give himself the extra splash damage into fights kilson low once again but beelines towards heavy He'll throw that vest back on his chest and keep himself in good nick. The railgun ready on the angle. 
Whoa, this is tense. You've got 50 seconds to get it done. Tox has to give it. He's just got to go in, wait. Yeah, I mean, he's going to have to make that choice here eventually. And uh, Kilson is going to make it a little bit harder for him as he uh, hits that rail long distance. Here is the Mega, probably the last one he's going to be worrying about here in this matchup and uh, making his way over. Does catch a little bit of his board there off to the side. Didn't have his rail out to hit that shot and it moves over. He knows exactly where his opponent is. Ah, coming out of the teleporter. Huge rocket waiting. Another direct hit and Toxic is down to 28 and this does not bode well for him as he only has 10 seconds to try to bring a kill back in his favor. Yeah. Tries to find him on the bottom. Rail misses, and that will probably be it. And uh, excruciating, excruciating way to unfortunately lose that. But again, in that position, one single frag in the lead. And yes, uh, an anarchy is going to not have any problem uh just trying to run away from you and making your job incredibly difficult i think toxic knew exactly what he wanted to do just think jackie if like a few of those rails that uh, that toxic had gone for would have hit um that could have been a totally different game but kilson played that one well he played it to win and uh you know picks it up to one he did. He played smart, right? He took the calm, collected approach to it, especially, I think, after getting a bit of that culture shock from seeing Tox playing a lot like Vintage Tox in the first map. He didn't take anywhere near as many risks. Realized that if I just play the yeah. smart game, stick to classic kills and really and just hold the high ground, lurk towards the middle of the map and waste as much time as possible, that's the easiest path to getting the victory. And in the end, that's how he wins it. A one frag win is still a big win. It's still a map under the belt, right? It is. It's all it all it takes. All you, all you need is for that number to be higher. And uh, there you go. So um, unfortunately, that does mean that Toxic will remain undefeated in series with that second map win by Kilson. It puts him 0-9 in this season, which is, you know, un unfortunate. He is more than likely going to have to face uh, a challenger matchup going into the finals. Still one week left, but I think at this point, you know, mathematically, it becomes pretty, pretty difficult. However, um, you know, any map win is going to be helpful as it gets closer to the end here. So we'll we'll have to see. Uh, but at this point, I almost got to wonder, like, does your life force just get completely sapped out, right? Like your will to play, uh, this is where you really got to just reach down deep because after, especially a loss like that on Molten, yeah. uh, it's probably a rough one to pick yourself back up and, uh, you know, go for the money here. I, I think we've always seen good mental fortitude from Tox in the past, right? You know, he's never been someone that will take it too to heart when he when he loses games in that manner. But it's also, you've got the two options of, of do you just take it as a best of one now? Forget about everything that's happened, even though you accept the series is over. But you put on a big show, you come out swinging. It was, I, from what I remember as well, in terms of the champion picks, having a quick look here. Yeah, it's, like, it's actually like a reasonably good matchup as well. You've got BJ on Tox. So this could still be a quality game to round out the series. This will be the bookend though. We are in. BJ in play for Toxic. Kilson coming out on Visor. It all comes down to this final 10 minutes. Let's see if he can do something for the fans. Yep. Uh, I, I mean, I think everyone would like to see it. I know there's a lot of folks in, in chat that were just uh, biting their nails there and clinching a little bit, looking for uh, that final potential frag there to tie it up and give us a sudden death overtime. But uh, Toxic hitting some nice rails here uh, outside of the gate. He does find himself low once again. We'll have to back off. So first frag doesn't come out right there. And a rail from Kilson's side and a follow-up for the first frag. And this is what scares me a little bit, Jackie. If Kilson gets that momentum picks up a nice little frag difference a frag lead he's gonna use you know uh piercing sight to his advantage and uh, probably try to to you know win in a similar way as he did in the, in the last map and at this point i i don't you know i don't blame him he's trying to secure his spot here in the qpl and uh play to win and do everything that it takes oh yeah and we're seeing it right like especially if the form he had from the railgun back on awoken is still in play now with that added benefit of knowing exactly where tox is whenever he uses pierced in sight it'll make his life so much easier to just devastate toxic's hp ruin his stack 
constantly throughout this game. We've got six seconds till Mega's up, and Kilston is going to lurk around there so he can bounce back up. No rounds left though. He doesn't have any ammo. It's going to be a tox click, but on Kilston. Oh, that's very awkward. He needs to run away, but he'll hold it down. The double. Oh, no. Oh. The double rocket came out. That was it, Wheat. That was the chance. It's gone. Oh, my gosh. Uh, you know, that's why I don't play BJ, because uh, my chances for negative one scores are much higher when I think it's the right time to use my double RL, and then I blow myself up. Um, that's really unfortunate, Jaggy. Like, that is real, real uh, rough to see right here. Uh, not only has he got to bring it back to zero, uh, but Kilson uh, clearly has control. You can see Tox is turning on. Is like, I will go Cyborg, and I will just chase you down Terminator style. Uh, but Kilson's ready for that. Hitting those defensive shots. There's another defensive rocket. Uh, he's going to use his piercing sight. He's got an idea where he's at. Watch him drop down. And, uh, well, Toxic was waiting for it, but uh, you know, Kilson wasn't going to take the bait. So two minutes and 30 seconds, two frag lead by Kilson. Unfortunately, Toxic needed to climb back from the negatives. Yeah, I, I mean, that's the thing, right? We've all been calling Tox the Terminator, but at this point, it feels like Kilson's new nickname should just be Sarah Connor because he's the one thwarting <laughs> his plans at, at every turn. But I don't know if there's an opportunity for Tox to really stop that. It is only one frag, but the fact we're already three minutes in and we're seeing the plays that are coming out from Kilson so calculated, so calm when he's peeking in with these rails. He knows exactly where you are. Hook, line, and sinker, waiting on the angle. As soon as you peek out, it'll be a snapshot. And it should be another frag in favor of Kilson. Ooh, timing a little bit off on the drop. I think he might have actually hit that as well. Won't matter in the grand scheme of things, but it could have been another kill. Yeah, it, it could have been. Uh, he, but I think he's playing this one safe now. I mean, just look at kind of, you know, what he's doing, right? He's positioning himself in areas where he can get some shots off. He's like, I know where my opponent is. Um, I will just kind of chip and cess away as much as I possibly can. Uh, and then going for the kill if it presents itself. He's also, uh, you know, using piercing sight to pull off little moves like that, right? A nice rocket and a nice double rocket for his second frag of the game. Negative one to two now. Kilton uh, widens his lead. Oh, and it's not going to stop there, is it? He's got ammunition to play with at this point with a rail gun, but he knows he's low. He'll commit to just unloading. Bullet after bullet coming out. A barrage of lead. Barely missing out on Toxic. He pulls out the shotgun and wants to introduce it to the Swede. So he keeps on pushing up. Tox is staying alive by the skin of his teeth throughout the course of this entire map so far. But it's a tri bolt in the hands of Kilson. You know how good he can be with a weapon, Ooh. but he won't actually land it. Tox gets him back onto a neutral standing. He's back to zero. Yeah, Jackie, I, I'm curious, right? Because the, that last few moments, it seemed like Kilson was getting pretty comfortable, right? He took a few fights there when both players were incredibly low. Probably not a risk he would take if they were tied or he was, uh, you know, not in the lead, obviously. Uh, but that might have just, uh, you know, not been the best play because it feels like Toxic was able to capitalize on that. If you're going to, you know, if you are going to take a risk like that, you, you've got to be ready for exactly something like that to happen. But uh, Toxic does get nailed there with a rail will hop on over to the mega but uh, you know i don't know did kilson get a little bit too comfortable there for a moment potentially so cool i suppose it doesn't really matter though does it if he's going to carry on doing things like that kilson back on top never been knocked off top at this point he has had the crown firmly on his head throughout this entire series and he wants to keep it there moving on we've got about four minutes left to work with on this one as time is starting to tick by it's a free and no split on the score tox again has the akimbo to work with he can bust out both of those guns if he wants to fight for control of a major item but that's if he can even really get himself in two positions to fight as kilston he's setting up traps and wants to peek around finally he's missing some rails as well <laughs> And, uh, you know, you, you, you hate to see it, but uh, it's been back and forth with the rails uh, this entire this entire game. Right now, we've got uh, Kilson with a 62 rail and Toxic only at 47%. So Kilson definitely nailing those, but not that one as uh, he pretty much whiffs that one, but does land the rocket as a follow-up. And uh, we do have Mega being picked up right here. Heavy is up. 
Kilson's ready for that, right? And now we enter in uh, in the final four minutes and Kilson's gonna have a three point lead. So maybe expect him to slow it down a little bit, set up some traps like that. Nice rocket, can't get the follow up. And Ooh. oh, from down below, burning the feet of Toxic. Uh, that is gonna be the fourth frag for Kilson. That was a lovely one as well. That's got to be at least a three-pointer. He put some finesse onto it. Oh, but talking of the finesse, he is styling on Tox. Drops down, hitting a sickening rail. Grabs the major item as well, so he's in a good position. This time he actually has some spare rail ammo to play with. He is a human aimbot, isn't he, at times? The fact he can just make those minute flicks, but make them look so beautiful. The quick switch to the shotty as well. Weapon prioritization through the roof. It doesn't matter if you've got two guns because you're still going to get slain by one. Yeah, and I think that, you know, I mean, Kilson heard the scream, knew that uh, he could hold his ground there. Uh, even with Akimbo, the, you know, and even with dual LGs, right? It's not going to be enough at that point. Kilson now with a very comfortable five frag lead. And this is where, you know, I, I start to really worry for, for Toxic to even get on the board, right? Hard enough to, to bring this one back. Uh, but against a, a player who can just kind of, uh, you know, play the way he has been and playing it, where he just slows it down. Ouch! The mid-air shoddy with every single buckshot just ripping through Toxic's body. Six to zero now. The two-minute warning is about to sound, Jackie. And unfortunately, I think uh, it's going to end up being a Kilson 3-0. Yeah, it feels like the last call's been rung already. And Tox is a little bit late to make it towards the bar. So I don't think he's going to get anything to celebrate with in this series. It's all going wrong. Drops down again. And he's just being picked apart. All of the LG hitting. It doesn't matter what gun is in the hands of Kilson at this point. He's given us pretty much the tawdy arsenal uh, of Quake weaponry. He's used everything to find a kill at this point, and he'll find Tox once again. Heard him bouncing past. Will he actually pick this one up, though? It's Tox, he's coming in hot, fires out the rocket. Kilson will evade it, gets behind him. He comes back up onto the top rope. He's looking to find the elbow. Finally is low, and the first frag for Tox is on the horizon. <laughs> Yeah, unfortunately, you know, there's an old saying, too little, too late. And that's uh, what I'm going to call out right here as even in the even his blood is streaming out of his body with, from all of the uh, bruises that Toxic inflicted, Kilston still manages to get that rail, making it eight to zero. And in the final minute, uh, you just have to, you know, you just have to go uh, this last map could have gone uh, a different way and, and it and it didn't but uh kilson he takes this uh, series he he needed it right uh based off of where he is and the rankings uh i think this is good for kilson fans and for kilson obviously as he heads into the final week and and prepares for the finals um you know toxic will have to fight a very very well there there we go there we go ladies and gentlemen we got our first frag from toxic nine minutes and 30 four seconds into the game might get a second one not gonna happen one to nine jaggy uh what do you you know what do you think i think kilston's just giving it an e he's lived his movie and the seats are packed everyone's come out rave reviews it's been given at least a 9.5 because this one is a blockbuster 10 to 1 split on the kills for me it's literally just that awkward rubby one where it felt like right this is it tox is going to get his first frag then no with what one hp or something kilson still hits the rail and just ends that dream yeah you know you the first two maps are you know they they told a little different story, but that last map told a much larger story is that, you know, it was not going to be easy, obviously, for Toxic to win that. I think that's why it definitely went went 3-0. But uh, that was that was very defining. That was Kilson saying, I am in this. I might have had some inconsistencies throughout this particular season, but I'm going to carry everything I got into the final week and into the finals and, uh, you know, I think for a lot of Toxic fans out there, like, honestly, just just a little sad because uh, you know what he's capable of. Um, and uh, we're just not necessarily seeing uh, that 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 level of performance out of him. Well, someone that carries a very special place in my heart is ready to join us again here on the virtual desk as Lethal will be coming back in and he can give us his thoughts on that one. I imagine you've got uh, some analytical breakdowns for that 10 to 1, Harry. Yeah, a little bit. Just a little bit here and there. It's just a Relson show, really, wasn't it? It's really hard to grasp. And 
I'd say that, you know, Tox was a bit open-minded in terms of what he wanted to do in all three of these maps. A bit over-aggressive, a bit over-zealous. He kind of gave Kilston what he wanted because with Kilston, he does struggle against the defensive passive players. And once someone's playing his style, he'll outstar you day and night. And even then on that third map, it was a bit of a shame just due to the fact that Kilson had, you know, he was at a very weak stack and Tox still got taken down. And I think at that point, at bottom mega on this third and final map, that's when I knew that it's just, it's pretty much done and dusted by then. There's a few sloppy mistakes here and there. And that's the thing about Tox is the fact that Tox is a very, very good player. High IQ in the world of Quake, but just didn't really show it too much during this series. And I think Kilson was quite satisfied in terms of what he wanted to do throughout the entire series. But great players from both, but... You know, Kilson with the Rilson physique, he's just been doing so well. He's been playing phenomenal. He's just had his number throughout the entire time. And the only thing I will say is the fact that even in the first map, it looked like Kilson was drilling him. But the, mm -hmm. you know, the map presence was still there for Tox, but Tox was just being a little bit predictable in so many different situations. Yeah, I, I, I agree. And it wasn't really... It wasn't really playing out in in uh, Toxic's favor the, too much at all. I mean, we saw the first map where you know Kilson obviously ran away with that a little bit, um, but the second one obviously being much closer as well. But that's it, and then Kilson is going to now be five and three in his ranking, and we'll see what that will do to that number nine spot. But uh, I I definitely feel like he he really needed that series victory, so you know, good on him. Yeah. To be fair, like when you look at it for what it is, right? In terms of the expected outcome, this is probably the one we should have been looking at. I went for the devil's advocate play. I was thinking maybe Tox would turn up. I, I think it was more wishful thinking than anything. That last map's really a shame, though. I, I feel like we could have seen so much more, but Kilson just didn't give him a chance. Wouldn't let him breathe. Wouldn't let him have any edge into it. It's really a shame. Hopefully, we get to see more from Tox thing is he always turns up whenever we've seen him in relegation he somehow just goes back to the old school form so i don't think this is the last we're going to see of tox in quake pro league at least yeah i'd agree no i agree. agree indeed yeah because with tox you know we know what he's like when he's on form but the thing is though his movement is to follow with his aim and vice versa you never see the combination of both and when you do it in that rare occurrence He's literally like a god and you can't be touched. You know, we've seen it on so many situations, but we've not seen it at all throughout the entire course of this stage, which is a real, real shame. We know how good of a player he is, but hopefully, you know, when he goes into relegation and if he does win and manage to stay in a great pro league, he needs to do some serious training and grinding to try and work out exactly what he needs to rectify in order to keep up that high level performance. Mm. Well, the thing is, Harry, someone that has been grinding an awful lot, of course, is Chain. And he is up next. And our next series will have Chain taking on Rafa. This is going to be the all-American, all-star matchup. Don't go anywhere. You won't want to miss it. This is going to be a legendary game after the break.